Hello everybody, how are we doing? Really quick video, I will show you how to build a high converting landing page for B2B consulting offers for selling services, any sort of professional service. And you might be thinking, why is that useful? I've got LinkedIn, but here is how I have built my business and how I see long-term sustainability of my business without chasing clients, without relying on LinkedIn messages and LinkedIn content. And quite put quite simply, that is owning my audience to the greatest degree that I can. That means I need an email list, I need an SMS list, and I need access to my potential clients without relying on just LinkedIn. That's how we've built this business over the last getting on to five years since 2017 is by doing this one thing. And just to, to the, the landing page I'm going to share in a moment, we spent about on this one, almost $100,000. We've had hundreds of conversions. We've converted into a lot of clients and it is consistently to this day on my website, on paid traffic, linked in my profile, linked everywhere, I anywhere I can put it. It's linked to my Instagram because Again, my whole strategy to building a business, and I recommend yours too, because if we strip down all the tactics, everything that's done on long, online, it comes down to building an audience and converting that audience into clients. Again, let's two things, building an audience, converting that audience into clients. And to me, there's three types of audiences. There's the audience that you don't control. LinkedIn is an example of an audience you don't control. You don't control who sees your content. You don't control if you have access to the, the platform. You don't control who sees your messages. And that's, to me, um, a losing game. I mean, I'm not saying don't do it. It, it is important, but, but to be reliant on that, to be reliant on something of which you have no control, that's, that's a, a dangerous game. Like People are busy in the messages. They're not seeing messages as much as they used to. And it's just trickier. So that's the first audience. The second audience is an audience you control, and that would be, for example, paid advertising. You can pay lots of money to various platforms to guarantee that you s people see your content. And that's got, look, they all have advantages, disadvantages. You need to be really, really good at it. You need to understand conversion. You need to have a great offer, and you need to become skilled at that particular skill set. But the great thing is when that's going, you control who sees it, because if you pay the platforms, they guarantee that you, the, the right people will see your content, your offers. That's the second one. The third one to me, the most important that you can build cheaply or expensively, you can build it whichever way you want, is the audience that you own. So for example, if I do a LinkedIn virtual event, I won't just keep it on LinkedIn, I'll push to a landing page. I've got my website in the headline of my profile because I push people there. When I do content or messages, I might push people to my website because I want to own my audience. What's an audience we own? It is maybe email, it's maybe SMS. If I can email somebody, not everyone opens, not everyone clicks, but I can tell you what, it's a lot higher than on LinkedIn. SMS, that's exceptionally high right now. So to do all these things, you need a landing page that will convert someone from LinkedIn or wherever you are, into becoming email and SMS. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share my screen and I'm just gonna break down this landing page. We have spent almost $100,000 on this. It's, it's made us hundreds of thousands of dollars. This is tried and tested. It's still converting in cold traffic because we also do audience number two, which is paid traffic, at between 25 and 30%, which in the B2B business building niche, the B2B business development niche, the B2B lead generation niche, I can tell you that's pretty good. All right, so enough said. Let's let's share the screen and I'll show you two versions of it. So there you go. You can see this is the, what I call the vanilla version of it, the white on black. Whenever I test an angle, an angle defined as a, a landing page and, and the way we are building it, the offer, the, the copy, I will keep it black and white because black and white is simple. Black and white works. Um, and for a long time, we did have it like that. We've also got a version of it like this, which is branded, more our branding colors. And, and the reason I do that is, is what I've seen in the data is that the branding att attaches and more att attracts a more emotionally aware audience, a higher state of energy, a higher state of action. So we do tend to run this, but we, we do both because both are profitable and they both uh, attract a different type of audience. This white one here, so this is the first lesson by this white one. I target B2B consultants and consulting agencies, small professional services businesses, typically between 40 and 60, quite old school and they say online, so they don't usually have this sort of stuff. 
they tend to respond to this, but male predominantly. This attracts more women and it attracts more women in that same bracket who are definitely a bit more advanced. And, and we work with both, so that's why we keep both running. They're actually on a 50% a split test on cold traffic at the moment. So let's, let's go down into breaking down the psychology of this landing page and how you can build it. All it does is it takes email and name. On the landing page, we'll take SMS, but that's another story for another time because you need to get SMS. But what are the various elements of it? So let's, first of all, let's just quickly Let's just quickly go back and just make sure we're on the same page and what a landing page does. A landing page is not for educating people on your product and service. It's not for showing lots of testimonials. It's not for people to read in a long time. It's to create that instant feeling of curiosity. Click the button, add your email, add your SMS, done. It needs to be very short, very quick. It needs to be consumable. Um, when someone's in the bathroom, someone's in a busy office, so we tend to stay away from video. I've just found, and also video is harder to control. We have to get the right energy, the right state, a whole load of editing. We, what, we, what we always recommend is just imagery and copy to begin and just to fulfill that very simple purpose. So let's go back and, and with that in mind of a quick opt-in, opt-in someone adding their email and SMS, this is what we do. We have up here, this is very important up here, this part here. In fact, this is probably the most important part of the landing page here. You really need to know if you're going to do well at conversion, how your market self identifies. What do they see themselves as? We've tried all sorts of stuff with this. And, and what's interesting, when we targeted B2B coaches or anything that used the word coaching, we got a lot of unqualified people that didn't have the business or the right mindset or disposition to build a business. When we use What's, what's really interesting, when we use the term B2B consulting or consultants, we attract good people who already have a business and a great skill set, and we attract the good coaches. So that's why it's there in orange, right? It's to call it out. So you need to name your market. They need to know immediately it's for them. Without even thinking, this should all happen. They should see this top bit here, and they should see this bit here. Without even thinking, they shouldn't go to their thinking brain. They should stay in the emotional brain. They should stay in the instinctive brain. Click here, it's usually filled because we use the same software a lot of people does, click done. So which, so we name the market and then we have a question. Why do we have a question? Because as I alluded to a minute ago, the number one thing that converts a landing page is curiosity, wanting to know what's on the other side. What could cultivate curiosity more than a question? I don't think there's much that can cultivate curiosity more than a question. And that question has to do FOMO. And look, we're, 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 we're fear of missing out. Fear of not having something that your competition does. Fear of not knowing something. That's what gets people to take action. This is, I mean, look, this is this is all this is all grounded in the tenets of, of persuasion and and influence. So, which of these three outdated tactics is pushing your way best CEO clients? So, it's a question that hits on a problem. Outdated tactics, pushing away your best CEO tactics. You could have, um, like for leadership coach, team leaders. Which of these hiring practices is pushing away your best long-term successful hires? Or if you are, I don't know, doing health, um, in middle managers, senior managers, executive managers, which of these outdated health tactics is keeping that belly fat on? Just something to cultivate that. And then this here, this is, this is, this is direct response conversion marketing 101, right? It's, it's really, really, really tried and tested. You, you name the format. So you might have a, this is works for lead magnets, virtual event, webinar, just name it there. So they know exactly what it is. They know exactly what they're, they're opting in for. So it might be live, free PDF guide, live training, free video, whatever. Put it there, we won't stay on that. Um, I don't like the word secret, but what I'm doing is here, is I'm just talking about the outcome that they want the outcome that they want, name the outcome they want. For me, my market's consistency, but consistency is overdone, it tends to switch people off. So I do use the word routine. Best kept secret, again, we're building that, we're building that, that, that curiosity. Re routinely landing whaleys, that's a mark, that's a phrase that, that really my market seems to resonate with. I mean, what is yours? 2022's, um, you could use different language. What's working now to recruit from your competitors who are getting worried about the recession and cutting costs without, even if? Something like um, 2022's best kept tech interview techniques. 
that filter out the thing they want and don't want without. We'll go into it. Just name the outcome. And if you don't know what the, the, the outcome your market wants and you can't concisely put it into language, it, it, it does get tricky. That's, and that's another story for another time. But if you've got that, just put it there. Without, like direct response 101, without, even if, using. I mean, without it would then be the thing they don't want to do, right? Cold messages, cold emails, and cold calling because that's the truth. That's what we do. We help people build inbound leads like this um, off platform. And then we send them to LinkedIn. So cold messages, cold emails, or cold calling without the thing. So outcome without the thing they don't want to. Outcome even if the thing they think they need but don't have. That's another way of doing it. Or using your unique IP and that would be some kind of framework. Now that's a trickier one to do. I recommend the first two if you're going to do it. Always put a button here. You've got to check on the mobile, by the way, what it looks like on mobile. I can just open this here because the majority of your conversions will come in mobile. So if I just go to edit the page, I can see that here. Uh, if I put it up here, make sure it looks good and it's aligned on mobile. So there we go. You can see when they see the mobile, that's what they see. You want them to see all, as much as you can without it being too small on the mobile and check it's optimized for mobile. A lot of pieces of software, oh, there's done something there. A lot of pieces of software here, you can select what appears on mobile and what doesn't. So I'm not gonna save that because <laughs> I just pressed something. So let's just leave the site. And then you want any sort of authority and social proof you've got if you've been published, you want it up there if you've, anything like that. I won't put videos and test testimonials on there because again, that tends to switch people out of the, um, it, test it. As with everything, test it. That tends to switch people out the instinct, the emotional brain. I mean, this is this is enough to get people to opt in. That's enough. So there we are. There's the, the, the construction of a landing page. Hope that's been useful.